In 1988, AC Milan, a monument of Italian football, rose from the ashes to win their 11th Scudetto after nine years of drought and extra sporting troubles. An ambitious team in the game that would conquer the Champions Cup for two consecutive seasons. Aesthetes of the round ball invested with an innovative mission of the time, to win, yes, but by offering a demanding offensive performance. On the bench, a precursor of modern football who in three years would go from obscurity to the limelight, becoming what many would call the Magus of Fusignano. This is the legendary story of the Milan of the Immortals and their whimsical guru, Arrigo Saki. How with a few swipes of his wand, a man unknown to the general public was able to revive a dying club and turn it into one of the most beautiful teams in history. Subscribe to Megafoot, the best of football and video. The 1980s were a long desert for AC Milan. At the end of the 1979 season, the Rossoneri's won their 10th Italian championship title, synonymous with a star in their shirt, just ahead of Perugia, undefeated during the season. A sporting success quickly erased by the Calcio Scomessi scandal. A case of sports betting on rigged matches that led to a sporting demotion for the club in 1980 and the suspension of some of its executives. The club fell apart at the start of the new decade and was threatened with bankruptcy. The fans wanted an uprising. Tired of seeing their club's reputation dragged through the mud by incompetent managers, they support the takeover project of a dynamic entrepreneur, Silvio Berlusconi, who is passionate about the Italian club. The revolution is underway, driven by a sulfurous enthusiast who is buying up the club's debts and committing himself to repairing the reputation that he holds dear. He brought in promising players such as Roberto Donadani and Daniel Massaro and undertook to turn the ailing club around and make it a European powerhouse. He kept Franco Baresi, a child of the club, as a sporting figure on the pitch who had remained in the Milan squad during the difficult years. An ambitious discourse and a solid financial power, Berlusconi made his Tifosi dream and promised them near glory. But money is not enough. Flair and a bit of audacity are needed. In the summer of 1987, Berlusconi put his trust in Arrigo Saki, coach of the modest Parma team in Serie B. He was a stranger to the world of high-level football. He was passionate about the game and aware of his technical limitations, decided to abandon his professional pretensions and concentrate on analysis and decoding. An atypical profile whose ideas appealed to the new manager but a little less to the Milanese fans who hope to see their suffering Milan become a winning team again. The story of the Immortals begins with this crazy gamble trusting a non-conformist, inexperienced person. But Berlusconi did not stop there. He decided to make a big splash at the Mercado and put the spotlight on his daring project. He recruited Ruud Gullit and Marco Van Basten, a fresh golden ball winner and an impressive young striker who had won the European gold shoe the year earlier, two world stars of Dutch football. Arrigo Saki was thrust into a star-studded locker room that was quite impervious to his fantasies. The challenge was great for a man who loved a type of football that did not yet exist in Italy, and even worse, that went against the grain of the great tactical trends of the time. In the land of the Catenazio, he wanted to rethink the collective based on clear foundations, an offensive style, the constant search for control of the ball, and the match. He considered the player to be at the service of the system and not the other way around. The players are, hmm, doubtful. The Lombards were witnessing a meeting of the third kind. The technician imposed two training sessions a day on his stars as opposed to four a week until then. The players did not believe in the young coach's methods. The fans are beginning to doubt the confidence they have in their new manager. In people's minds, the image of a madman or a visionary takes precedence. The results did not follow. A sporting fiasco seemed to be in the offing. But Berlusconi, as a good executive, imposed his choices and his grip on the squad. As he left the locker room on a night of a crucial match against Verona, he announced, between Saki and the team, I choose Saki. He wants the project to succeed and as time sometimes does things well, the team is getting stronger and the results are becoming more regular. The great Milan is taking shape and the players are integrating into this new system. The traditional libero, the last bastion of the dominant defensive system of the time, was replaced by his own defense with two lines of four. The team was an anomaly in Italy at the time. Talent has to be creative by staying in the area allocated to them. When some say that he restricts his star, Saki on the other hand defends the anarchy of the game left to the creators like the Napoli of a certain Diego Armando Maradona, who at the time shine over the Calcio. At the end of the season, his Milan was a steamroller that came to the top of the Italian championship, an 11th Scudetto that gave credit to a daring duo. Conquering Italy is not enough to keep the promises made to the fans. With this team, they must shake up Europe. In the summer of 1988, Frank Reichard, a central defender with the Dutch national team and winner of the Euro a few weeks earlier, was transferred from Sporting Portugal. He joined his two Dutch colleagues who had arrived the previous year and strengthened the already solid Rossoneri team. The Milan of the Immortals is in place, behind the charisma of the three Dutchmen who make up the entire podium of the 1988 Golden Ball won by Van Basten. The collective is not in shortage of players of character. Carlo Ancelotti, Paolo Maldini, Mauro Tassati, Alessandro Costacurta, 
will be a part of this legendary team. Berlusconi's side began with a brilliant European campaign with an attractive attacking style of play. Saki's individual talent shone through in a compact, tightly knit block that troubled most of the teams that stood in its way. April 19, 1989, after a draw in the first leg, Milan hosted Real Madrid at the San Siro in the semifinal of the Champions Cup. The Immortals outclassed the Merengues 5-0. The Spaniards are caught out of the aggressive pressing of the Rossoneris. The Italian clinical defense gives them no chance to express themselves. Berlusconi gets his chance. This legendary match restored Milan's stature and made Arrigo Sacchi crazy, the wizard of Fusignano. A month later, AC Milan confirmed its success with a spectacular 4-0 victory over Steaua Bucharest. The champion is not in dispute. After waiting 20 years, the Lombards are once again the top of Europe. This team was quickly described as one of the greatest teams of all time. Van Basten won the Golden Ball again on an all Milanese podium for the second year in a row with Franco Baresi and Rijkaard at his side. They went on to win five more continental titles, the 1990 Champions Cup, two Intercontinental Cups, and two European Super Cups. Only domestic competitions eluded them, as they had to be satisfied with a podium finish in the league. But Saki's history at Milan was as crazy as it was short. In four years after building a legendary team, he retired to take charge of the Italian national team. He left to lead a career that would never again reach such a level of success, leaving in his wake a team thirsting for trophies. He will remain a builder for a Milan that for 20 years will be enthroned above Italy and at the top of Europe. In 2001, the team was taken in hand by a certain Carlo Ancelotti, a former protege of Saki. Under his command, Milan will know the heir of the marvelous. In the 2000s, a new generation of coaches used the precepts of the magician to propose a direct and spectacular game. Among them, Rafael Benitez, Claudio Ranieri, Mauricio Sarri, and a certain Pep Guardiola. Thus, by combining audacity and ambition, Silvio Berlusconi and Arrigo Sacchi were able to create an elegant and spectacular attacking football and the avant-garde schemes that are today the foundations of our modern football. And even if sometimes the dictum says that the best wine come in old bottles, this touch of novelty in Italy has made many thousands of Tifosi dream. Thank you for watching our video. If you'd like to learn more about your favorite sport, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like it, to share it. It helps us a lot to keep creating more videos about football and its crazy stories. See you soon for a new video. Ciao!